Cause we is back once again with another reaction video, bruh. And today, I'm coming back with another reaction for y'all here, man. And A, A, got another little video for y'all, bruh. We got John and Ashton, couple channel, and they also do reactions to the stuff I react to. So I'm about to be checking out their reaction. It's this couple I always watched back in the day. Um, they're, they're a really good reaction channel. Um, shout outs to them. I'm about to be reacting to their reaction to the three horror films, uh, horror stories once again, man. You guys already know what it is. Let's get it. Let's go. You know what I'm saying? Welcome back to the channel. Give me guys some more content, some more uh, reactions. Um, then just some funny stuff to watch. Thank y'all for being here. We almost had 100, uh, 100 subscribers. So go ahead and help me out on that, man, down below. You guys know what to do. Thank you, thank you for all my returning subscribers. Welcome back to the channel. Let me know if you're an OG. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it on. We got John and we got Ashton. They about to be checking out Mr. Nightmare, man. Let's get it. Go down, like, and subscribe to the channel down below for more reactions. Let's get it. And if you guys don't subscribe to the channel, that's all right. At least hit the like button. Let's go. I had to fix my um, broke headphones, man. Let's get it, bro. I haven't I haven't watched their videos in, in so long. It's been like I think like a whole year. I used to always watch their reactions, bro. So today, I'm gonna give you guys a video of me reacting to one of my favorite reactions. Twenty dollar reaction. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute. Keep it under ten minutes. Keep it under ten minutes. Include the video. Twenty dollar reaction stream labs. Oh, okay. I see what they're doing. All right. Hey, get your money. Get your money. Our houses are usually the one place for the streams. I don't think I've seen this Mr. Nightmare horror story. I didn't see this one yet, so I'm gonna be reacting to it too. <laughs> After his last class on Friday, to his job at a gas station for six hours, and after his shift was done, he'd go back to his parents' house. Usually his parents weren't home on weekend nights, as they were the ones who were more often out drinking. Damien pulled into the empty driveway, and as expected, everything was dark in the house. He needed to put his bike that was still in his trunk back into the shed in the backyard. So he was back. the bike from the trunk of his truck and rode it down the pavement past the fence <laughs> into the shed. When he shut the shed door, he noticed the bathroom light upstairs in the house was on now. <laughs> he didn't remember noticing the bathroom light being on when he passed the side of the house, so he assumed that maybe one of his parents stayed home for the night. Yeah, duh. Well, it might have probably one of his parents. Something around. As he opened his mouth, ready to call for one of his parents, something deep down told him not to. Damien went up the half flight of stairs from his den to the midsection of the house. He looked up the short stairway to the upstairs and saw a light creeping into the hallway through the closed bathroom door. Oh snap, this is it. So somebody was in there. He went upstairs calling out mom and dad. There were no responses, but he was in very close range of the bathroom now, which made it odd. He approached the bathroom door, again calling out mom and dad. No response. Damien figured maybe his mom was in the bathtub with earbuds in or something. The door was locked, so one of them had to be in there. <laughs> when the phone rang, he went downstairs to answer it, to find out it was his dad calling, checking in to make sure Damien made it home okay. His dad sounded drunk as usual per Friday night. <laughs> Damien questioned him why he left mom at home as he walked back upstairs to the bathroom. Right. His dad seemed confused. Then he noticed at the bottom of the door, through the opening, two shadow outlines of feet standing by the door. <laughs> literally facing the door right on top of it. Then Damien's dad dropped the bomb and told him that his mother was right beside him at the table. 
I ain't like did that. I ain't like edited that. The, the little, the little scary horror beat drop. And go, Dun. I like how they did that, bro. It was like, as soon as he told him, he was like, bro, what are you talking about? She's standing right next to me. What do you mean? The only logical thing he could do, he ran outside, hung up on his dad, and called the police. All right. When Damien looked up to the bathroom window, where you just saw the light. Confronted him and knocked, probably like knocked him out or something. Hiding in the bushes later, he heard the police. Hiding in the bushes. Or where was he hiding in the house? Plot twist. What if he was hiding in the house when the police left and in the closet of your room and as you went to sleep? Plot twist. Let's go. Cool. to him as Ted. Ted was 16 years old and he lived with his dad and brother at their isolated farmhouse. The house was relatively. Hold on, honey. It's small with a first floor and a basement. However, it was a huge amount of property with a barn and trees in all directions, providing optimal privacy. There was a long driveway that extended from the side road to the property, which was what Ted was riding down at the moment, returning from his friend's house on his bike. Ted rode into the barn where the family keeps all the bikes, and then headed for the front door of the house. However, on his way, he noticed the basement doors were wide open. Oh, Not snap. Cars in the driveway, <laughs> Ted assumed it was his little brother who, for whatever reason, left them open. Oh, uh, this is the home invasion. Stepping down into the, the home invasion one. Ted quickly realized none of the lights in the basement were on. He called for his little brother, Andrew, who answered from upstairs. Andrew came rushing downstairs, turning on the light on the way. The first thing Andrew pointed out was the foul stench in the basement, but Ted said he couldn't notice anything. Ted questioned Andrew as to why he opened the basement doors and then left them that way. His response was, I didn't. Ted continually accused him of either lying or forgetting, but Andrew swore he hadn't even been in the basement all night. <clears throat> the disturbing thought that it was left unlocked and somebody entered the house came up, and the two subsequently turned the basement practically upside down looking for anyone, turning up nothing. Andrew said he had been in the living room so bent that everybody think there's somebody in the house you check like everything go into the basement and look around and that's sketchy though like why those doors were open room all night and hadn't heard anything plus he would have noticed if somebody had come upstairs so ted felt at ease knowing nobody was in the house he sat down on the basement couch and started watching tv that's when he noticed the couch felt kind of weird Less soft than usual. <laughs> Wait, how do you know this? Running into Andrew halfway. Somebody was under the couch. The rest of the way and locking the basement door behind him. When Ted could finally get some words out. He told Andrew he found a dead body stuffed below the cushions of the basement couch. What? How? How you didn't see it? Whose wife had also gone missing a few days prior. Oh as no! Well as Ted and his family knew at the no. posting of this story, the culprit was never found. No way! That's creepy. How do you not see the dead body though? So are these real stories? Like how do you not see the dead body? Mm. It says real cases. So. Yeah, that's that's crazy. They actually find the body in a couch. Like, what is the chance that that one's? Yeah, that one's probably made up. Seems too bizarre, but maybe. <laughs> it's made up. Cause like, how do you not see the dead body if, if it's under the couch? If I, uh, under the cushions, that doesn't make no sense. One Friday night after going a whole day without Make no sense. He decided to call her and invite her over. She didn't answer, so we left a voicemail. It was odd for her to not respond to his calls or texts, so he was starting to get worried that maybe she was losing interest. After calling repeatedly with no response, Ed heard one of the doors closing from downstairs. He breathed a sigh of relief, knowing that she had come over after all. <laughs> Ed it wasn't her. Saying, come upstairs. She was like, what? After a few seconds of tinks and thud sounds coming from downstairs, she finally started walking up the stairs. She was walking up really slowly though, as if she were taking two Ooh, that's creepy. That is so creepy. Finally, Ed just called out her name in confusion, and the steps stopped. 
<laughs> then Ed's phone began to vibrate, and when he took it out of his pocket, the name on the caller ID was Sarah. He picked up, oh, snap. and immediately Sarah up. apologized for not being able to get back to him. But he interrupted her and asked her what she's doing on the stairs. <laughs> was a long silence, and then she finally said, what? What? I'm not on the stairs. This time, Sarah informed him that she was still in her car on her way home from work. Ed locked the door, and immediately after, the doorknob started turning. All he had to do was to yell, get out of here before I call the police. Right. Whoever was on the stairs... Because what can you do in that situation? Out the front door of the house. Ed looked out the window, searching for whoever it was, and saw the most disturbing thing he had ever seen. Across the road was a tall man wearing a dress shirt and ripped jean shorts, looking directly at him. And despite how far away he was, Ed could see a smile on Ed's face before he turned and ran into the woods. Oh my god. <laughs> ah, he said the only thing he seen from the man was a smile and a turn from the woods and never seen that again. How more dramatic and how more creepy can you make that? That's the limit. That's funny, man. That was. <laughs> that was very creepy. The last one was good. I like how they did that. Hold on, honey. I love Mr. Nightmare's videos. He does a really good job. They're yeah. I'm surprised we didn't see that one. Mr. Nightmare. You gotta watch his videos only at night. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. Reacting to Ashton and John right here. The little couple channel they um they got going on man they do reactions which is pretty cool because i can relate because i can i can see them and they doing the same reactions like i'm doing and stuff like that and i i, I know it's been a minute i haven't it's been a minute since i watched the video anyway so why not just hop on react hop on hop on a video and hop on youtube and do a reaction of their reaction man to mr nightmare as you guys know so he is he he really do tell the story pretty good so it's like I'll be I'll be so into it and it's like so it's like so entertaining to watch and very very good to watch. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. That's the end of the video. Um, I never seen that Mr. Nightmares video anyway. Um, by the way too, so it was very interesting. The stories was pretty good. I like this, I like the third one was the best one and the first one. The second one, I don't know about the second one, bro. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you guys for being here. We almost had 100 subscribers. If you guys want to help out, go down. And um, hit that subscribe button, man. Let's get to 100 subscribers. We on the road. Let's get it. Hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys enjoy it, go down, like, and subscribe to the channel down below for more reactions. Let's get it. And if you guys don't subscribe to the channel, that's okay. Please hit the like button, bro. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it.